Hello and welcome to another Josh Plays 40k painting tutorial. Today I will be painting a Necron Doom Stalker and this will be in the Sautec Dynasty paint scheme. Uh, now for this I have done some sub-assembly. Uh, so for instance there's the two sort of shield panels that go on the sides of the cannon at the top here uh, that I have kept free just to give easy access to the orbs that they have underneath as well as the orb on the sides of the model there. And then I've also kept the top free as well. Uh, again, giving easy access to the legs so you can pivot them nice and easy without it falling off or risk of damaging. And again, you can then obviously get to any details underneath. So these cablings here that would be potentially obstructed by the legs later on and, and maybe uh, getting paint where you don't want it. So uh, it's quite an easy way of doing that. And again, you've got this handy little sort of slot mechanism on the top here so the uh, top part can come on and off very easily. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing I've done is uh, prime the model with Chaos Black. And then I have just gone over the model again with a sort of heavy dry brush of Abaddon Black, just sort of taking uh, any sort of risk of not colour matching later on with the blacks, because the Chaos Black is a slightly different tone to uh, Abaddon Black, so you just want to uh, obviously make sure you don't show that up later on if, you, if you're neatening up. So uh, a heavy dry brush tends to, tends to take that away so that you don't uh, clash too much. So the first thing we're going to do is do a sort of heavy dry brush of lead belcher all over the miniature. Uh, now for this, uh, there'll be a few different ways and a few places you don't want to get it, uh, but typically it is going all over. Uh, and just for reference and an easy tutorial here, I've got uh, lead belcher on, on a sort of fairly decent sized dry brush. Uh, you don't obviously have to take too much off the paint because you want it to be quite, quite heavy. Uh, but really just what you're looking for is just sort of circular motions all over the panelling uh, and the metal work that you want it to be and it will give you quite a lot of nice sort of recess shading together with uh, obviously meaning you don't have to go all over the model first with lead belcher uh, and then shading it with none oil perhaps or afterwards uh, this sort of gives a nice sort of weathered tone to it straight away uh, and you can sort of add further shading to it if you want to so you could add say agrax earth shade to get a more browny rusty effect um, or, or you could none oil it again if you wanted to uh, pick it out but again as you can see there sort of minimal effort you've got quite a nice sort of metal tone to it to the body already uh, and obviously with a Soutec they do have a sort of blacky silver sort of look to them uh, along with obviously the usual sort of green necron glow so the model itself doesn't have to look too menacing when looking to paint it uh, there are nice sort of quick simple techniques to make it look really good on the battlefield so the parts that you don't want to worry about, uh, particularly on the on the main part of the model here, uh, is the the main cannon on the top. Uh, you don't want to do all of that. So uh, so for this part uh, here on the top here, you don't want to worry. But you can do obviously the body, the spines in particular. You want to make sure they're a lot more silver than the rest. Uh, so you could even go over that with normal lead belcher and then uh, shading afterwards. Uh, I may do depending on. Uh, how the dry brush comes out uh, and obviously then the little uh, gauss flares at the front here they they want to be black as well so work your way around the model uh, again obviously with regards to the uh, the legs uh, you can you'll want to be looking at getting all the sort of framework in the silver uh, and then but these sort of uh, over sort of armored leg parts at the bottom here for the feet uh, you don't have to go too heavy on those uh, i will be sort of trying to give them a, a slightly browner look uh, so that they um, obviously look a bit more weathered and beaten for going over the terrain. Uh, but for that, again, I will just use uh, some additional washes and, and dry brushes. So we can uh, have a look at that. So yeah, work your way around, see how you get on, and uh, we'll come back for the next stage. So once you're happy with that dry brush over the body, the next thing to do is to add any further shading you want to do for any sort of great uh, old effects or dirtying down that metal even further. So I'm going to be applying sort of three different shades to the model. Uh, first of all with none oil, just to pick out any areas that I want to be a little darker after that uh, dry brush. So the most nominal parts would be these sort of interior pipes on the legs. Uh, 
Uh, they don't need to be quite as shiny as they have become with all the dry brushing around it. So just sort of giving them a, a sort of thin sort of coat of, of none all over the top will just help give them a bit more definition in the background and uh, make them look a bit grimier given they have been moving quite considerably whilst in battle. Once we're happy with that Nun Oil, uh, the next stage I'll be putting on for shading is Agrax Surf Shade. Now I mentioned this earlier that I will be putting this over this sort of uh, front leg amp part of the uh, of the model. Uh, and I'm just literally say putting that over the top of the silver to uh, sort of give that a slightly browner effect uh, and, uh, and sort of dirtying that up a bit. And then that third and final shade we're actually going to be using black templar contrast paint uh, and this is just to go back over the sort of ball joints in the legs so uh, these sort of interior parts here and this is just to uh, sort of help break up that uh, those legs again uh, so it's not too consistent with the silver uh, and just give their give those again a little bit of a sort of blacker and more worn feel so do take your time because there are quite a few of these there's uh, two on each leg uh, around there and then there's the two just above the gun as well the two little guns here as well so take your time work your way around and then let all those shades dry before moving on to the next stage once you're happy with those shades and they've all dried the next thing we're going to do is start highlighting up that silver so the first thing we're going to do is a, another dry brush uh, obviously a lot lighter this time sort of focusing primarily on the edges and for this we're looking at necron compound uh, and again just for say as i said focus on the edges of of each piece uh, the legs so this armor paneling here and that will just start to bring a bit of a shine back to it so work your way around the model and then we can move on to the next stage when it comes to the gun i'm also just picking out these uh, interior tubes uh, with the silver highlights so these little cables uh, and uh, bits now obviously don't worry if you get these sort of cuffling areas we're going to uh, paint those back over with black uh, but it is just a nice little highlight to give these while uh, well with the dry brushing and then to finish that silver armor off we're going to do a final sort of edge highlight of rune fang steel and again this is just to pick out the sharpest edges that you want to look crisp and clean in the silver as you work around so uh, do take your time uh, pick out any of the details that you want to be a little bit brighter uh, and then we can uh, move on with the next step and then to finish off these uh, these top arm paneling here we're going to get a little bit of balthazar gold uh, and on these sort of runes here on the sides of the panels we're just simply going to rub run our brush over the tops of these just to pick out them in the Balthazar goal just to make them stand out a little bit further from the rest of that panel. So the next stage of the painting is probably going to be the most time consuming because it's the part that you want to take your most time and be as accurate as possible. Uh, and this is picking out all the details that are going to be green or have some sort of energy glow effect going to it. Uh, and what we're going to be painting here is first of all the white to give you that undercoat. Uh, so that you can then obviously apply those greens and lighter colours on top of it uh, without it being darkened by the black or silver underneath. Uh, and for this I'm actually using uh, the Army Painters Matte White uh, and we're going to pick out sort of all the orbs, uh, any cabling that you want. So for instance the uh, two orbs on the bottom of these uh, panels here. So work your way around. You will want a couple of coats of this white uh, to, to uh, sort of thin down coats of the colour uh, to get a nice smooth finish. So it's those parts uh, that you want, so then there's the orbs in the middle of the uh, sort of main top of the of the model. So those parts uh, and then the eye pieces as well. And then very carefully when looking at this, now you may want to uh, do the main orbs and then come back to this part especially for the uh, sort of infant but the weapon itself here you want to pick out the uh, the main sort of tops of the orbs on top of here and if you can very carefully pick out the sort of individual sort of stems in the middle so in this part here uh, now obviously we'll have to go back over with with a black and, and tidy up 
later. Uh, but then also looking at the cannon, uh, you'll want to pick out these sort of increments in the middle here. So these sort of energy pylons in the center. And again, as I say, we'll need to tidy up. But if you take his time, obviously try not to make too much mess, uh, unlike what I'm doing here, uh, then you will obviously have a quicker clean up time with the black. But if you go over with the white and then tidy up again, and we'll come back and look at getting some green effects on the model here. Once you've got that white applied and fixed up any of the areas with the black, uh, we can move on to getting the green glows onto the model. Now, there's a few different paints you're going to want for this, um, but depending on which sort of parts of the uh, cables or, or inner tubings that you're working on. Uh, but the first one we're going to go for is Striking Scorpion Green. And this is for the sort of front parts of the weapon here, so simply going over those parts there. And then also for the inner parts of the Gauss Flare at the bottom here as well. So dropping in to that area what we've done before, this will give a nice sort of glow effect into that weapon uh, in, instead of it being so, uh, so dark in the middle there as it was before. Uh, and then once you've done that, we can then do the next colour on the weapons. The next colour we're going to do very swiftly is some Dark Angels Green. And this is just for this centre sort of icon part here of the main weapon. So again, just going over the parts that we've painted in the white and letting it sit in the recess. And then the next colour we're going to move on to is some Warp Lightning. And this is for the back part of the weapon. So in these sort of recesses here that we painted up, just to uh, sort of give a different sort of tone to the weapon itself so that you haven't got the same sort of colors running right the way through it. It does give a sort of build up effect as the uh, firing mechanism starts working its way towards the front. And then sticking with that uh, warp lightning, we're then going to put that on the cables that are hanging down from the weapon here. So this white one at the top here, and then also the two that hang down from the front towards that side there. And then to finish this top piece off, we're going to use some Tesseract Glow. And this is for the big orbs on the sides in the recess here. And you just want to coat that all over. It gives a really nice sort of glow effect. And then also putting that Tesseract Glow on the front eye in the middle. Now sticking with that Tesseract Glow, we're going to just pick out those orbs that are on the bottoms of those extra panellings that we've kept separate. And uh, so just coat them over, obviously not forgetting both sides. So with the orbs in the top part of the gun all sorted, the uh, only thing left to do now is the cables on the bottoms of the legs here. Now for that we are going to use uh, a few different contrast paints again just to get a nice mixture. But the first one we're going to use is Warp Lightning. And this is for the sort of outer tube, so the longer one of the two, the one that has the sort of loop down the bottom. And this is for obviously all four legs. Uh, but what we're going to do is carefully coat down that cable. Obviously if you do make any mistakes and go over to the, uh, the inner, inner cable, don't worry, we can obviously neaten up again with the white afterwards. This can be quite fiddly to get very neat given the size of the cable. And then once you've got the warp lightning on the top, what we're going to then do is, while it's still wet, take a little bit of Dark Angel's Green, now you do only want a little bit, and just focus that around the bottom of the loop. Now, this will just give uh, a bit of contrast to it and a little bit of a blend so that you've got sort of a darker loop as it hangs down to the bottom. Once you've let that first green dry over that cable, we're going to then tackle the inner cables here, and for this, we're just going to be putting a coat of Tesseract Glow over just to give a sort of lighter contrast to that outer cable. And just very carefully again just go over the top. It's very important that you let the outer cable dry all the way first before attempting to put this on, otherwise they will 
run together, which obviously you don't won't want. So work your way around those four cables again to get that done. Once you've applied that Tesseract Glow, the only thing left to do now is to put the model together completely and finish off the base. And there we have a finished Necron Doomstalker. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if any questions, just leave them in the comments below. But otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Thank you.